know who Superman is? <laughs> Watch this. Oh! What's going on, guys? It's Brian Jacob Simmons Comics, and we are here with that weekly new comic book day show. That's right. This is the Bolo Show. We're covering the hottest, most talked about comic book releases this week on Thanksgiving of all days this week, Jack. How about that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, well, happy Turkey Day to everybody who is watching us today. I uh, hope everybody's enjoying time with their family and being safe. But we are here, of course, to talk about New Comic Book Day, which just hit us yesterday. Um, not a big list this last week, but definitely some interesting releases. Right. We're going to start right now talking about those first appearances. First one we got is over at DC, and we get Suicide Squad number 11. Fantastic series. If you guys aren't reading this, highly recommend you do so. But we get the first appearance of the Revolutionaries. Yeah, and we got a new team. I think if you've ever watched this, you know my track record on teams, right? But I'll put the pause on this one. I'll say I haven't read this issue, so I don't yet know enough about this to be able to like really take a hard opinion on it. But I will say um, I've been very anti-teams. I feel like teams don't always pan out. Uh, the percentage is a lot smaller than with individual characters. Um, having said that, Tom Taylor is a star for DC. I think he, especially with the stars that they've got leaving the, the, the previous generation, I really think they need to go hard with Tom Taylor. This is the end of the series. This is the last issue. Uh, so I wonder, like you're creating a new character at the end of a series. Uh, is there something to that is this going to go somewhere so it's something to pay attention to the harley quinn variant for this book is amazing um uh, this entire run has been excellent Uh, i hope that it's it's i I imagine that it's ending because of the movie because they're going to usually want something that's in continuity uh with the movie so we'll see um but i hope that there's more of this because tom taylor killed this they need to put tom taylor on a bigger title that is the next move yeah, the next one, we got that Batman White Knight, Harley Quinn number two. We get first appearance of Starlet. Yeah, new first appearance in the in the White Knight universe. Um, so uh, certainly we've talked about if, you, if the viability of this, the, the reader buzz. We love comics, love, love, love comics from both a, a collecting and fandom standpoint, but also an investment standpoint that get popular first from reader buzz and that's what you've got here with this entire white knight series if you've got the reader first if the comics are good then yeah low prints cover pre, pre, uh cover art uh first appearances all of that stuff can then play into it but if the comics suck it doesn't matter and and because these are good and so good and it makes us look and go well you know joker was out elseworld and um the animated universe certainly could be a place for this and look what we're talking about with hbo max and the constant need for uh new content and ip and in their tie-in with dc warner brothers and att and all that um so it, this is one to pay attention to one i like uh and and this is a series we talked about issue number one people kind of were sleeping on and then caught people off guard i think i expected this with issue number two right and we're getting a trifecta of first appearances from dc comics because red hood outlaws number 51 gives us that first appearance of tommy max I gotta say, this is a great week for first appearances. Um, none of them are gonna be like punchline right off the bat, but that's a good thing, right? Because you're not, yeah, you don't got the flip, but you don't have to ch- crazy chase. You're able to find these. Um, Tommy Max is a cool looking character. Uh, it kind of gives you like almost a Joker tease before you see kind of this character. Um, A lot of buzz going into this Red Hood and the Outlaws uh, 51, another series that's gonna be ending. Um, but this is a, a, a character who I think we've talked about. DC is doing something, right? They are adding new blood. And I, you, you can miss me with all of the negative DC talk. We've certainly made our voices and opinions clear on that. Um, but I, I like this one. I, I think character design and people's initial receptions have a lot to do. Um, comics publishing is a lot like wrestling. I mean, we make wrestling comparisons. I'm sorry a lot. I'm sorry if you're not a wrestling fan. But wrestling, specifically WWE, changes a lot at the last second. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Right. It's worse. <laughs> it's worse. Like, you think it's bad buying jerseys of your favorite football player? Don't go buying stuff from your favorite wrestler. Yeah, yeah. Their slogan today could be gone tomorrow. The tag team could be over. All of that could happen. Um, 
And, and, and these things happen so kind of last second. It's vintage in a week. <laughs> right. And a lot of it is because they're reacting to the, or at least in if you want to take a positive look at it, they're reacting to the audience, right? So uh, when the crowd wants Kofi, they give them Kofi. When they wanted Daniel Bryan, they gave him Daniel Bryan. Um, and when the, the comics community does the same thing. I, when, well, I want Kofi back. <laughs> yeah, me too. Um, when the when the crowd uh, wanted, you know, uh, punchline, we've seen DC say we're going to give you punchline, um, and I, I think clearly there's a desire for new characters, and I think they will pay attention to how these are received. So I'm paying attention myself to these characters um, and the initial response that they get. Uh, so um, I like this one. I also think the print run issue 51 on a title that already isn't a huge printed series is something to pay attention to. Also uh, great, great looking cover on this one as well. Yeah. And the last one we have for first appearances, we're actually getting over to Marvel and we get that new power pack number one. Yeah, and this is, uh, okay, we're getting an agent, like a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent, but another kind of character I like. Um, y- you'd have to really believe in Outlawed to, to believe in this character hardcore. Um, it's interesting that um, this book sold out cover A at Midtown. Um, I think that's because it's in the Key Collector app as a first appearance. People get excited, go run and grab that because some of the variants are still available. And I don't think that like Power Pack would, would garner that kind of desire. Now, certainly we've talked about outlawed in general is popular. Right. Um, but this is, you know, put she, this character is put to be a mentor to these young superheroes based on this new, um, uh, I forget it's named after Kamala Khan, but they like the new accord that they've come up with. Um, so it's one of those things. If outlawed ever plays out in, um, whether animated or uh, in live action, or quite possibly if what could happen is when these characters appear on television, it could be really a post outlawed environment. So this character could just be there. She could really be set up to be a, a very, um, uh, oh, I say she, I have no idea if it's a man or a woman. I don't know why I did that, but <laughs> this character could be <laughs> really set up uh to be integral and important so it's another one like the team one where i go you know there's there's some negatives about it right you know shield agents type type characters damage power control. pack you know the, yes certainly the relation to power pack and i mean for sure we can go into the fact that yeah it's probably a lower printed marvel number one because it's power pack um and there is a hidden gem high ratio that i expect to kind of be popular because I, I don't think that'll be out there but um but yeah Either way, I, I think all of these first appearances are lottery ticket first appearances. They all have a chance. And I think that's more than we have mo- in most week. A lot of weeks, I'm kind of working hard to try to get excited about any of the first appearances. It seems like they're so common, but um, some decent ones. Yeah. I think out of the four, my favorites probably the Tommy Max. Yeah, yeah. I, and I can see that. Yeah, you know what? It's got an 80s look to him. So I'm not, <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> But I mean, all the, I love all those series. I mean, I can't say enough much about Power Pack. Not really my cup of tea, but yeah, Suicide Squad. You got to read it for Outlawed, though. Yeah. But that's the first appearances. So we're going to get into my favorite section every week, and that's those Reader Buzz books. Kicking off the Reader Buzz this week, we're going back over to Action Comics with Action Comics 1027. Yeah, real interesting to see Action Comics hit the reader bus. Now, first off, I would put this one in the category of books like I would have put on the list just because of cover art alone. That cover A is awesome. Cover B also, I think, could be like long-term. I could have put that as my long-term spec pick. I would have got argued down by both people who uh, wouldn't look at a variant like that and think that, and then also people who are just anti-DC cover B. But I think the the super family, the fact that you get all those characters depicted on that cover, um, including like the newer characters who are really popular, I like. Um, but from a reader buzz standpoint, it, this, this issue has already been garnering it pre-release. You start to see retailers get their books in on Tuesday. And I would say, um, if you're just a fan of collector, this isn't probably isn't for you. But if you you know you don't want to be spoiled. But for our most hardcore audience, right? Those 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 Wednesday warriors, those last second speculators. Um, one of the best tools is follow retailers on on Twitter. 
because a lot of them get their books in and immediately read them uh, and, and will give opinions. Uh, Larry's Comics, Larry Doherty, who, who's a frequent viewer of our channel, um, he is a great follow. Uh, Big Bang Comics out in, I believe, Ireland is an amazing follow. Um, and there's several, several more. Um, but you know, I would suggest do some research, find some of those, because you know, they'll talk about And this is an issue everybody was buzzing about today, that everybody was talking about. Um, and I think that that's something to pay attention to. Now, I'm not saying it's going to be some sort of secondary market success immediately. I'm not saying it ever will be. I do like the variant. Um, but I think, you know, we, we're always looking for good Superman stories. And I think some of the best ones have been the ones that have involved his family, whether it's him and Lois stories or uh, specifically him and Jonathan and then bringing Superboy Prime into it, which I know is a lot of pe old school people had a hard time with Jonathan. They couldn't give up. They're their Superboy. Um, and now you get a little bit of everything. And there's a lot of talk about Supergirl kind of being badass in this issue. So I'm, I, I'm excited to read it. It's the one uh, we haven't read the books yet. It's the one I'm the most excited to read this week. Right. I mean, this week, going through this list, I'll let you guys know it's pretty heavy DC week. And it's great to see talking about uh, talking about wrestling references. It's like that Hulk Hogan old school the two arm drop and then on the third one it shakes up that's kind of how i feel with dc yeah bringing it back we haven't been as high on dc lately but yep. that's a big week and the next one we're talking about we talked about this on the last call show our, our final order cutoff this is that black label book with the other history of the dc universe number one yeah so as soon as i just said action comics 1027 is probably the book i'm most excited to read i almost immediately wanted to take it back but i didn't want to interrupt you this is the book i'm most excited to read no doubt and i probably could have put it as a long-term play as well um but Without reading it, I don't know yet. I think it has the potential. If it delivers on the concept, just the concept, the idea. I'm a big believer in just, and I'm getting outside of comics here, but just in life in general, that life is about perspective. That you have to understand other people's perspectives. If you heard us talk on the last, on uh, the Three Up, Three Down this week, we talked about perspectives amongst generation of comic book collectors, even bringing it really within our world. I think you can bring it outside of comics and talk about life outside, talk about your family, talk about your interpersonal relationships. Um, but certainly when we're talking about things like race relations, that, that comes into play extremely heavily. And it's just a fact that most of these stories featuring uh, characters of color from long ago were written by people who were trying to imagine somebody else's perspective. And that naturally is going to cause a little bit of a gap in what is reality and what would be natural versus what is. And this is going to give us kind of those key moments and events through the perspective and eyes of these characters coming from the voice of people of color, specifically um, John Ridley, the director of 12 Years a Slave. This is something I'm highly, highly anticipating. I'm a Black Lightning fan. If you haven't watched the show, I think the show was great. I do think it kind of went off the rails a little bit, but I, I've I, also, I'm a, a animated DC Universe fan. Black Lightning is a great character within the Justice League, um, how he plays off of Batman, how he plays off of Superman. Um, he's kind of like that moral compass of the team. Um, so I'm glad to see these kinds of characters front and center. There's a local comic shop day variant. There is a incentive variant. This is one to be on the lookout for because I think, Brian, the way we talked about, uh, you know, three jokers and, and the, the kind of like long-term potential of three jokers or last Ronin to kind of be that like wall book, even though it may not be a first appearance in, in the killing joke sense. Uh, I think this book has that potential as well. And it's definitely one that I've been excited for. This is one I actually pre-ordered for FOC black label. I tend to like black label books, but <clears throat> everything you just said, and yeah, I want to see that alternate universe. Yeah. The next one we're talking about on that reader buzz, we get Kaiju score number one. No, not that annoying ass cartoon. Kaiju, we're talking about Kaiju. Yeah, so big, big, big anticipated release here um, coming from Aftershock. Uh, uh, Kaiju stuff is usually pretty popular, right? We've seen that recently. And then it seems to be a renaissance coming back um, with, these, with these types of properties. And certainly, really, uh, if you look, Gundam properties are popular. Uh, 
We're certainly seeing uh, uh, anime's increased influence, manga's increased influence on a younger generation. I really think the Asian influence in general in the United States is increasing, and especially within different forms of art. And I think that also, by the way, plays into the popularity of Peach Momoko. And all of that being said, we also got some good old-fashioned spec on this one too, Brian, because it's already been picked up for an option on so- by Sony. Um, so you're talking about a book that's about to drop that already picked up for an option. Uh, in a subject matter that is not a hard sell to the comic book community Um, and coming from a publisher who has delivered some great reads. Um, So I'm skeptical about the, the, the option because we haven't always seen like independent publishers like Aftershock kind of take that option to the next step. Having said that Sony's a big deal. That's not like a a small publishing house, right? This Sony you're imagining is going to put some energy and effort into this. And, um, there's also an incentive, a one in, I think, 15 incentive on this one. Um, great looking cover. I expect that one to be in heavy, heavy, heavy demand. So this is one to be on the lookout for on New Comic Book Day. Uh, I could have put it as a long-term play as well. It was definitely a thought. I don't know enough about the property yet. It's hard when you're getting into to independent comic series unless I'm able to like really like read a preview of the first few issues or something. It's hard to know what that long-term value is going to be, but it's definitely one I'm interested in. Yeah. The next one's one I'm always interested in and hit, hit after hit. I mean, James Tynan's always killing it. And we get that department of truth number three this week. That's right. He, and I, it, that's uh, appropriate words with killing it. Cause certainly he has been from something's killing the children, the woods, Batman, wind uh and now department of truth and here's the thing we're on issue three this uh, I, i've said this about other titles I, I just want to bring this up this is not common it's not common that we're going three issues in that they're selling out at large retail that comic shops are drying up on them um this is a major 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 series in the works um i really think i don't want to compare it to something's killing the children it's so very different um but very similarly People aren't jumping off this. They jumped on. They're not jumping off. Um, all covers are selling out. Incentives are doing well. There's no limit to how dark and depraved they're going with this art. And guess what? The horror community loves it. And there's option talk about this. There's already been rumored that major, major options in the work with major, major actors. And it's just something that has not been announced yet. Right. And then sticking with independence, we also get that walk with monsters number one that comes out this week. Yeah, Vault Comics continuing their consistent run of reader buzz. Uh, it seems like every number one they're dropping is getting attention. I think this one may be hurt by coming out the same day as Kaiju Score. It'll be interesting. They're kind of in that similar lane. Now, maybe you go in for Kaiju Score and you grab and walk with monsters as well. And maybe it doesn't matter because Vault's on a run and people are grabbing every Vault number one that comes out. Um, also, shout out to Vault, who's really like, taking steps up as a publisher we talked about um like mad cave going out and bringing in chris sabella that's like the next step and then you're seeing vault they're adding incentive variants now to books so you got murka and dolfo incentive variant for this one big ratio stuff too so like you know vault is is becoming more and more and more of a player and i think you have to pay more attention and they're no longer happening to not that this was a negative because i loved it they didn't but they don't have to rely on gimmicks they don't have to have just the pulp variants or the, 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 the vault vintage, they're able to like kill it through storytelling and stories that are really resonating. And they're building a loyal readership of these stories that are really kind of very eclectic. Yeah. And it's great. I mean, you mentioned it could hurt it with coming out with Kaiju score, but sometimes it might help. It also one, one title might help the other, mm-hmm. especially if you have a good LCS, a lot of times they're coming to talk to you and then notice, Oh, you got that book. You like monster books. You might want to pick this one up as well, but either way it, it could hurt. It could help it, but I picked up both. Oh yeah. And that's going to wrap up the reader buzz section for us, but here comes that shiny object that everyone loves. And of course we're talking about that variant buzz. First one on the very buzz, Turkey Week, and it's local comic shop day week, so we got those local comic shop day variants. And some of these are literally shiny, so they fit into <laughs> your description, because we're getting some foil. Like but Moana. Yeah, I shiny! Could... <laughs> 
<laughs> but I couldn't list all of these um, because the reality is so many of them are, are in demand. Power Rangers, Wibamoko, Something's Killing the Children, uh, definitely one of the highlights. Um, the the Savage Dragon, Peanuts uh, variant, um, the, the Future State book, uh, the uh, other DC history uh, book, um, you know, uh, just a multitude of these local comic shop day books are really connecting with the market this year. More than we've seen in previous years has always been one, two, three hot ones. We just talked about this on three up, three down, um, that these books literally are hot this week. Um, they're the ones that everybody's talking about. Um, and I think long term, um, you're going to see these something's killing the children's everywhere because, you know, you had to be nuts not to order this one. Uh, if you're a retailer, you, you know, even if you could sell them immediately, this is a back issue I'd want to have. Uh, this is your opportunity for a kind of cover price, two hundred dollar book. So, uh, and you can look at it like this: like I think there's like what five, six printings for something's killing the children number one, maybe seven. Um, you know, this is just another printing of that, really. Um, so I think in long term, this is going to be a book that will that will really raise in value. Um, and it's it's certainly my favorite of the group. Next one, I told you it was a pretty big week for DC Comics. And we got that Wonder Woman 767 and Joshua Middleton continues to kill these covers. Yeah, it's, it's funny. I wonder if like new comic fans who there's so many new comic fans constantly entering the market that I wonder if some of them are jumping in and seeing this Middleton art almost for the first time because these, these Wonder Woman variants are getting hot. Um, or is it like lapsed Middleton fans who had gotten kind of um, Middleton burnout with, with the consistent uh, Batgirl covers and, and, and Aquaman and have now moved over um, and are kind of reinvigorated with Wonder Woman. But it was also really a great DC cover B-Week. If you look at the quality, even the ones that aren't on the list, like I, I mentioned, Suicide Squad is a great one. Um, uh Red Hood Outlaws has a great one. Action Comics has a great one. Detective Comics has a great Bermejo. Um, there's so many, so many great uh, cover bees this week from DC, but that's pretty consistent. Um, they're putting a lot into that art for that for cover price. You really can't beat it. Of course, one of the hottest artists out right now is Peach Momoko. We get the Peach Momoko variants for Vampirella number 15. That's right. And, and Dynamite is one of those publishers who sees that like, the 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 sand the, it. <laughs> the, the, the sand in the hourglass is like running down and they're running out of time with momoko and yeah they're like like let's figure out how many of these we can pump out how many versions of the Do same it. book now make it black and white now make it white and black <laughs> right um at least the cool one about this one the one that i think maybe could sneak up on you the cover b is gorgeous and then yeah they did a million versions of that book but there is a sneak peek FOC variant that got added. It was like a one in like seven or 10 incentive, but it didn't get added to, to the list till like the last second. A lot of dealers are going to miss that one. Um, that's the one I think really could gain value over time. It's a closer up shot. Um, again, some of you are going to just redundantly talk about how you don't like Momoko, and I get that, but there's a ton of people who do. And for those who really do, um, it, Momoko is going to become Marvel exclusive. So some of these lower printed ones that they're going to start drying up. Right. Then also from Boom, we get that something's killing the children. Issue number 10, that second print for it. Yeah. And all of these second prints for something's killing the children have been incredibly popular. Um, look at like what seven, eight, and nine are doing. Um, so you can just look at that and you, you can project 10. Here's why I like 10. I like 10 for the reasons that people don't like 10. People don't like 10 because Erica Slaughter is not on the cover. And look, I've gone on record say, um, and, and I've told people at Boom that Erica Slaughter, I think is the greatest uh, creator owned independent character in all of comics right now. Um, that she's the character who I feel like you could pluck into the Marvel or DC universe uh, even with as nasty of a character as she is, um, her she has purpose, and that that really resonates. And um, she's badass uh, and very very almost retro uh, in that nature, um, but yet in the present being a female. Um, so it, it really it's a character that just I, I as soon as I saw her I was like this is just money. Um, but look. If I'm making an exclusive variant for something's killing the children, I'm not a dummy. I'm putting Erica Slaughter on the cover. But because of that, 
if you look at every cover that's ever been released of something's killing the children i'm pretty sure every single one has her on it in some way shape or form and the ones that don't are more like artistic depictions of yeah. like in general of uh the series there's yeah, like really the no- christian ward one right or there's yeah. some that's um but there really isn't a lot of like other characters featured front and center. So um, because I believe in this long, long, long term, um, and I and I think the way the story set up with Erica Slaughter always going to a new town every arc um, is going to constantly bring in new characters, and it's going to, but it's it, it's something that's going to play out well, I think, in a television or a movie, um, and will allow for um, any a, the. the any one of these characters to kind of pop later on the secondary market. So the thing that makes it different is why I like it, even if that's the reason why maybe people initially don't like it. But I also think it's got a chance to be smaller printed than some of the last couple because um, it didn't have Erica Slaughter on the cover. And that goes against what a lot of people are saying that everybody's waiting for the the second print run to kind of like run out. But uh, I think this one may keep it going because it won't be as, as highly printed. And that's just speculation. I don't know that. Yeah, we got it. Speaking of second prints, we got another second print with that Champions number one that came out. And this one's getting a lot more attention. Immediate sellout at large retail. People love it. Great cover. Uh, Infante cover. Great, like, up-close portrait. Kamala Khan, who's front and center, of course, in this outlawed story. Um, Man, I am bullish on Kamala Khan. Um, If you weren't, you know, incredibly bullish on her already, uh, you know, again, the Marvel 616 documentary series, there's an episode on uh, the creation of Kamala Khan, as well as Miles Morales and kind of like their importance as as characters, um, as well as like Moon Girl got talked about in, in those um, documentaries. And, and really, I really think Kamala Khan is really positioned to be one of the biggest characters of the next generation in this in the next um, form of media, television, movies, whatever, whatever combination it, it, that's going to be. So um, I think we're going to have to get used to this. I think she really is going to be on almost an even plane with Miles, as close as you can be. He's got that Spider-Man attachment that is going to boost him to that next level. Um, but and there's and there there's always going to be I think the the male audience. But at the same point, uh, I, I'm bullish on her. We've been bullish on champions. We've been bullish on late printings. And we've been bullish on outlaws. So this one checks all those boxes. We've also been bullish on Star Wars lately, it, just like every other comic fan. But we haven't talked about Dr. Afro that much, but there's Dr. Afro number six. You got that one in 25 Jen Bartel variant. Good timing as everyone speculates on whether or not that character at the end of last week's Mandalorian episode is Dr. Afra. I got to tell you, I can't believe it is. Um, I got to believe that Dr. Afra, when we see her, like we kind of know it was Dr. Afra. They've, they've made a point they know that people watching um, the Mandalorian are not, a lot of them are not star Wars fans. So they, if you've noticed, they do a very good job of saying somebody's name almost as soon as they're introduced. Um, And then they do that on purpose. And that's kind of like a film school thing, like a basic uh, thing to like for introducing new characters so that, you know, somebody feels immediately familiar. So the fact that we didn't get that, I could be wrong. I I didn't think that was Dr. Afra. Um, also, I think Dr. Afra, if you think she's important, you're going to immediately recognize the actress that's going to be playing her. That's another thing, I think. Um, but either way, that has gotten a lot of attention on Dr. Afra this week. Having said that, even if none of that happened, I don't think it matters. Because you mentioned Star Wars being hot, and it is red hot in all forms. Dark Horse back issues, Marvel original series, new Marvel. The reader buzz is hot. First appearances are hot. But also... This is a Jen Bartel variant. We've talked a lot on this show specifically about Jen Bartel as a major audience. She doesn't work as much as a lot of other artists because she works with like Adidas and several other kind of corporate uh, entities and does a lot of work outside of comics. But, um, you know, when she does do it, her work always finds an audience is very beloved. Um, She's in a lot of demand. And, you know, this one right here, an incentive on issue six, I like this one. I think long term, this could be one of those sneaky Star Wars variants. I would not be shocked looking at this one, uh, you know, if if it was featured on you know one of the websites or apps as being like a two hundred dollar book in, in in a cover price variant watch or something like that uh, in the future. This is definitely one to keep an eye out for. Yeah. So we've gone through the first appearances, reader buzz, and the variant buzz. 
So that discourse leaves us with Jack's long-term play. And for the long-term play this week, we've talked about DC's, these future state titles coming up. Talked about how we both like it. We like seeing that new generation of superheroes. We got DC Nation Presents, DC Future State. So there's a lot to talk about with this book. And I want to try to try to touch on everything. First off, I agree uh, to anything anybody's going to say immediately about the pricing pre-sales that we've seen on this book. Ridiculous. Um, there was miscommunication about this book. The, there was a one per store version of this book and then a kind of open order version where like you got the book for free matching your or exceeding your Batman orders um, you just had to pay shipping and then you could order extra copies for a quarter a piece. And then there was the, the blue border version, which is a rarer, like I think one per store version. And so when stores started getting a lot and there was confusion between it and then everybody jumped on board and got excited and with the nature of social media and, and newer collectors, just not kind of being able to do the research as well as not having that really accurately communicated by either like retailers or DC or whoever um, to really let people know there because there were plenty of retailers who took advantage of it. Um, and, and we saw extreme prices that I think a lot of them are going to get returned because here's the thing. It's going to be a lot of stores giving this book away on new comic book day, uh, doing the right thing. Um, and prices I do expect to drop drastically because this is a quarter book. Um, do I do I have a problem if this book ultimately ends up selling for 10, 15 bucks? Nope, because it's my long-term play for a reason. Um, but the pre-sale prices, I agree, are ridiculous. That has nothing to do with my pick. But I have to get that out of the way because it's the elephant in the room. It's the thing that everyone's talking about. Um, but now that we've talked about that, um, we talk about the next, I'd say, obstacle to this book. It's a preview book. Now, look. I'm going to say that I picked a preview book and I'm going to defend it. But I also have, just to give you my personal opinion, I don't love these preview first appearances. Um, I, I don't love that Marvel age books are in more demand than like the issue number one that comes before them or um, that sometimes they are and sometimes they aren't. Um, and then, you know, I really hate that people pay for like catalogs with Miles Morales on the cover uh, and then call that a first appearance, uh, you know, but that's my personal opinion. But here's what I, I do notice. As we talked about on 3 Up, 3 Down, there's a generational divide, and, and I don't fit into the majority on this topic, um, whether I like that or not. Uh, the preview appearances are popular, and they seem to be here at least to stay within the, the, the current climate of the market. I think any sort of change isn't going to happen overnight. You're going to see that over time. Um, and because of these preview appearances being looked at as first appearances, it's really kind of made me as a collector and investor changed the way I view a lot of these books. So this is a book that maybe 10 years ago when Brian, you and I started back in the old CBSI message board days on Google plus, I probably would have ignored this. I would have picked up some copies at my LCS, but I probably wouldn't even have bagged them and boarded them. They would have ended up in a short box and then they would have popped later. And I'd been like, Oh man, I got those. That's what, that's what happened. Um, but now the times have changed. And enough have popped for 10 bucks that we've started to notice that this can happen. Um, and then when you start to look at the viability of the characters, look, you can feel how you want about future state, but what I'm going to quote is James Tynan, who said this really, really eloquently and better than I'm probably going to paraphrase him um, on Ross Ritchie's YouTube channel, the CEO of Boom Studios. We've done an interview. We, we've tried to get people's attention on the channel. You should really check out this channel. It's a, uh, yes, Ross is a friend of the channel, but, it's an amazing, amazing. Especially for like inside baseball. Yeah, if you at all want to know what goes into making, I mean, we all judge punchline or something's killing the children and people always want to have an opinion. That's coming straight from the mouth of the man who created it. And he's telling you these amazing stories. Um, and, and it's really, it's really valuable. Um, but he made a comment about that I mentioned earlier about the younger collector. They don't want to collect. Um, they don't want to collect like their dad's Batman. They don't, they don't want that. They want their own character. That's why Miles Morales is more popular these days than Peter Parker. Like the younger generation wants their version. Um, so they love Spider-Gwen. They love Gwenpool. 
Um, they, they love punchline right now, seemingly more than Harley. Um, they want their versions. And I understand why an older collector feels some sort of way about that. What's wrong with my Aquaman? What's wrong with my Flash? Um, and I get it. But the reality is that if we want comics to keep progressing, we all say it, we all speak about it. We all talk about children are the future, right? Children, the young kids come into the hobby, making it accessible for them. Well, if what they really want to see for accessibility is characters that they can feel invested in from their start, their origin, um, then it's important and key. And Brian and I have kind of sat in the middle of this argument where it's like, yeah, we fit into the other category. We know it's not for us. But at the same point, we sit and go, I'm curious to see, though, like what happens when Batman gets older? What happens when there's a new Batman? Um, I, I we keep here reading the same stories over and over again, and even like Joker War, which was amazing, was still just another Batman versus Joker story. It, it really, if you get real macro with it, um, this has the opportunity to be something totally different. It could it fall on its face and be terrible? It could, but if any one of these books pop and become something, this book right here, this preview book. I believe the younger generation will look at as a first appearance for probably four or five characters or more. Yeah. Can't, can't not want to get this one, but then like the Marvel point ones. Yeah, exactly. That's a, it's a great point, Brian. You can't, exactly. You can't get the Marvel point ones. You can't get rust. You can't jump all over Marvel previews and then leave this one. And here's the thing. I'm not telling you to go pay some exorbitant price for it. I'm saying if you can get it for free, if you can get it and not spend that much for it, um, I'm all for it. I, I think this is a great long-term hold. Um, it's all going to depend on what future state ultimately does. But the best sign for that is the fact that the CW has already picked up the, the Wonder Woman character for a Wonder Girl TV show. Um, so s- certainly there is some kind of synergy, to use a bad word, between, you know, all areas of AT&T as far as what is concerned with this future state program um, for it to get greenlit so fast. So to me, that makes me go, well, Hey, what else is possible? Um, So I like this one. It's free. Uh, I like to put books in the long-term play that are accessible. Uh, As of today, you could get one added to your cart in Midtown uh, with every order. Uh, So, you know, I, to me, it's even worth the extra shipping to like if you were getting 10, 12 books at Midtown to break it up into multiple purchases, but um, to each his own. And I know not everybody's going to agree with me on this one. I hope I gave reasons uh, that countered that. But either way, um, that is my thinking on the long term play this week. Yeah, I definitely like it. I mean, I wouldn't pay the, the pre order prices that people are asking for, but $30 is nuts. But I like it not only as a long-term play, but it, it gives you a taste of what you might expect coming forward with future state. I mean, I'm anxious to read it. I have my own reservations because everyone hates change. <laughs> so yeah. you're like, ah, don't mess with my justice league or don't mess with my, you know, but either way, also there's the other side of me and go, it's almost like the what if, and this is going to set it up. It's going to give me a taste of it. And like you said, why not pick it up and hold on to it? Because if some of those characters do take off, this might be a good one to have. Right. And certainly that local comic shop, Dave variant, that blue border one is going to be the one that everybody's going to pay the exorbitant price for and probably rightfully so. But you know, it's it, either way. It's good. It's going to get attention. It's good for local comic shop day. And if you're looking for any of these local comic shop day books or looking to pre-order uh, any books, we always say we advocate Check out blackcapecomics.com. Um, you can pre-order, pre-FOC, um, any of the books that you see us talking about here, any of them we talk about on the last call show. Um, certainly many of these we talked about on the last call show. They're available from Black Cape Comics. They also do amazing exclusives, awesome art prints, a lot of low printed uh, goodness. Um, and they're great people and they ship like absolute collectors. So you can really trust in that. And they have amazing customer service. So if you have any problem, uh, they're going to do you right. So be sure to check out uh, Black Cape Comics. And of course, Frankie's Comics uh, for any of these local comic shop day books or any of your uh, pre-order comic needs. Yes. Also want to let you guys know that 
we are recording this Tuesday. This is airing Thursday night, Thanksgiving. Thursday nights, we normally record the last call show for Friday. Let to let you guys know that there will not be a last call FOC show this week. Those are the books that are launching Christmas week that are heading FOC this coming Monday. So make sure you guys pay attention to that. But we're going to be spending time with our families and we hope you guys are doing the same and I hope everyone has a great Thanksgiving and is safe. With that being said, guys, this is Brian Jack with Superman's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video. Nowadays, nothing really excites me. Only one of me and nobody's like me. Phone ringing and I tell him it's I got one to you on bling and she's free. Free. Photo. Photo.